In this lesson and the next few lessons, we're going to take a look at group policy within a Windows domain. On the left hand side, I have a domain controller that is on my domain, and then on the right hand side, I have a client computer, it's a Windows 7 computer that has been joined to the domain. And we're going to modify some of the group policy settings here on my domain controller. So I'll go ahead and click on start. And once we install the Active Directory services, domain services, and promote it to a domain controller, this is a common thing that most of us are going to work with is group policy management because these settings affect the computers that are on my domain. Basically, we modify um, our servers as well as our clients' default settings. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you if this is the first time you've logged in to the group policy management and open this tool open, you'll see the forest here. We're going to expand the forest and find our domain that we want to work with. So I'm going to expand the domains as well. And here I can find my domain. I just have a single domain on this network called penning.local. And in this domain, we have a default domain policy. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. And I'm going to choose the settings tab now. And what's going to happen is it's going to generate a report. I'll hit close. It's going to generate a report on my network that's going to show me all of the settings that are currently in effect based off of this domain policy. And if I scroll down through here, you'll see there's a couple things that are already set up by default. If the settings have not been enabled, then what will happen is we won't see them here. So this is just a snapshot of the current settings that have been set through the default domain policy. One of those that I'm going to work on changing here in this lesson is the password policy. If you take a look, this is a hierarchical system starting with computer configuration, policies, Windows settings, security settings, account policies, and then password policy. And we're going to navigate to this location here within the default domain policy in just a moment. But what I want to point out are a couple settings that we're going to look at changing. We've got enforced password history. This tells us how many times it actually is going to remember your password before you have to you can repeat a password, meaning I've got 24 times that I have to create new passwords every single time I'm forced to change my password. You've also got the maximum password age, which is currently set at 42 days. That's how long I can have a password before I'm required to change it. The minimum password age tells us how long it is before I can change it again, meaning if I currently, if I change the password, it's going to take me a whole 24 hours before I can change it again. I have to wait that long before I can actually change it. I can't change it twice in a row repeatedly. And then the uh, minimum password length currently is set as seven characters. This is kind of a tricky one because it works kind of in hand with the complexity. If complexity is enabled, I have to look at both of these because the complexity will have its own requirements as well. So seven characters may not necessarily be the length, just depends on whether what you have set for complexity here. And we'll take a look at these settings as well. And so let's go ahead and actually modify our default domain policy. And now if you take a quick look before I do, all of the organizational units fall underneath this default domain policy, which means the settings I put in here will affect anything in the accounting organizational unit I have set up, all the domain controllers, all of these ones that I've created, everything will be affected by this default domain policy. So let's go ahead and right click on it. I'm going to choose edit. It's going to bring up my editor for the default domain policy. You can still see that I'm working with the default domain policy. And I'm going to have to navigate to this location. And I'll move this down so I can show you. It's under computer configuration. I've got computer and user configuration. Rule of thumb is if, it, if the settings have to take effect before the user logs in, as far as it's something to do with the computer itself, then typically it's going to deal with the computer configuration. If the settings apply after the user logs in, then it usually has to deal with user configuration. And, it, and they, do, they look a lot alike, and you'll find a lot of settings on both of these that are very close. However, it's kind of the rule of thumb. If it's before the user logs in, it's going to be computer configuration. After the user logs in, it's going to be user configuration. So let's go ahead. It's under computer configuration, policies, Windows settings, and then after Windows settings, it's going to be security settings, and then account policies, and then password policy. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'll move this over so I can see this console here. There we go. This is the hierarchical system to find the password policy. And there they are, just like we saw already set. So I can actually make changes to this. Enforce the password history. If you want to leave that, that's fine. I've got the maximum password age. I want to click on this because I want to show you the settings for this. 
Currently it says define this policy setting, it's 42 days. I can uncheck it and then it will not define it. If I go to the explain, it will tell me that I can put anywhere from one to 999 days. If I put zero in there, then basically the password never expires. So if you're one of those people that don't like to have to change your password ever so often, now this kind of goes against best security practices. However, if I were to put zero in there, that'll make it that, so that none of the computers on my network will have to change their password, at least not according to the default domain policy. Minimum password age, I'll go ahead and double click on that one as well. I can see that I can go from one to 998. And then if I put in zero, that means I can change it immediately after I make a change. So I don't have to wait a whole day. So I'll go ahead and change that one to zero as well. Hit okay. You can see some of these effects are changing right now. The minimum password length. Go ahead and double click this one. Just as it says, if I click on explain, I can see some of the things that I've got here, but it's just like what it, what it says. It says uh, basically how many characters long my password has to be. And I can basically set that to anything that I want. I'll leave seven for now because I also want to look at the complexity. When I created a password for my server, I needed to make sure that I had a password that had a, either a capital letter, a number, a lowercase letter, or a symbol. It had to have three of those four. Here's the explanation of this. And you can see here it has to have either an uppercase, lowercase, a zero through nine, as well as a symbol it has to have three of those four, as well as the fact that if it's enabled, the password has to be at least six characters in length. This is regardless of what you put on the length of the characters, the setting we just looked at. Meaning if you put two characters for the length and you have this enabled, you're still going to need to have six. So this is a choice whether or not you want to have passwords with this complexity for the entire domain. I'm going to go ahead and actually turn off or not define this policy. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And you can see now I can set passwords of seven characters and it does not need to have the complexity as far as a capital letter, a lowercase letter, or a symbol. And so if you're in one of those domains where you don't necessarily want to have that kind of password structure set up, you can take that off. Or you can modify these settings in any way you want. I will repeat, this is probably not the best security practices as far as making them so they no longer have to change their passwords as well as um, giving them the ability to have passwords that are really short or not complicated as far as the complexity is required. However, I wanted to show you where these settings were. So let's go ahead and now that we've made these settings, they're already going to take effect. We can just close group policy. And if I were to refresh this, there it is up here, refresh. And I'll go ahead and hit close again. And OK. You can see that those settings now have taken effect. The settings don't take effect immediately. What has to happen is your computer has to go through what's called a group policy update. Real easy. If I go to start on my server and type in GP update and hit enter, you'll see that it runs through and it's going to update it here as well as my server. If I come over here, I'll need to type in uh, my client GP update, hit enter, and it will run through it here. What this is going to do is it's going to go through and say to the computer to go ahead and check the group policy through all the group policy settings, apply anything that may have been changed. Uh, to this current computer and so it has. Now we can't see this happening, the passwords. This is not something we can physically see change automatically. However, on this computer from this point on, I no longer have to have complex passwords to log in to any of my computers and I can change my password as often as I want to. And so this is the first video on group policy. Um, a few more will come, but this completes the video on changing some group policy settings within the server. 2008 release 2 operating system.